Welcome back to our study of the Apostles, looking at Lesson 6 of this study. And we'll begin this lesson with the study of Andrew. Andrew, of course, was Peter's brother and uh, had a very close relationship with Jesus, as most of the other disciples did, uh, the Apostles. Uh, remember, they, Peter, James, and John were part of the inner circle, but... Uh, we see Andrew had a, a great relationship with Jesus as well. Mark 13, 3 says, As he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately. And so uh, he did try to spend time with Jesus as well. All the apostles did to a certain degree, but uh, Peter, James, and John especially. Andrew here is close by as well. And we see that uh, Andrew apparently was a very humble man. And I think the fact, the way that Jesus referred to him, uh, not as the son of his father, but as Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Uh, I think sometimes God addresses people in the Bible in certain ways to show their character. Uh, it's kind of like Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas is listed as the leader of the mission group in the first missionary journey. Then later on, he becomes secondary in that group uh, under the Apostle Paul. Uh, and yet, Barnabas is fine with that. It doesn't bother him that he's not doesn't get top billing. Uh, I think there's some churches. Uh, I know of a church that uh, a good-sized church uh, stood for many years. And the pastor was a great man, but in his later years, he started getting a little bit feeble. And I, I can't say when it's God's will for him to resign uh, or not, but uh, the church was struggling because of his lack of leadership in his last days. And he was teaching a Sunday school class. And there was another guy teaching a Sunday school class as well for the adults. Uh, several of his students from the pastor's class left and went to the other Sunday school class. Uh, and the other Sunday class was growing where the pastor's class was kind of dwindling down. And it caused problems with the pastor. And eventually the other Sunday school teacher had to leave the church over that. Uh, and you, you really can't say what's in a person's heart but it doesn't look very good. It looks like the pastor uh, didn't humble himself in the way that he should have. And in fact, he, if anything, he should have rejoiced over the fact that knowing that he didn't have many years left on this earth. In fact, he didn't live just a few years after that. Uh, he should have rejoiced in the fact that knowing that when he's gone, there'll be somebody else that can take over. Uh, that's the way it ought to be with us. As human beings, sometimes people resent others. Andrew here shows some humility in his ministry. Uh, not a lot said about him. We'll look at what, what is said in the scriptures uh, about him. He's first mentioned at Bethabara. Uh, he was a disciple of John the Baptist. We talked about that, I believe, earlier. Uh, Bethabara is uh, some beyond the Jordan River, uh, 50 or 60 miles from his home anyway, there in Gal uh, Galilee. Andrew as a Jew may have well been looking in the Old Testament uh, for the coming of the Messiah. That was what God had intended. God gave uh, uh, Old Testament passages. Isaiah 40 uh, begins with uh, the sending of John the Baptist, not mentioned by name, but a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare your way, Lord, make straight in the desert highway for our God. And so Andrew may have, have recognized this. It stands to reason that many Jews did. Uh, remember, there were a lot of Old Testament Jews that were saved before John the Baptist came along and before Jesus came along. Uh, I think sometimes people forget that. They think that uh, in the Bible, only people who got saved, the only saved people were those who listened to John or listened to Jesus, or maybe uh, after Jesus' ascension, listen to the disciples. But the fact is, there were many Old Testament saints that were truly saved, and then 
when the church began, they were added to the church there in Acts chapter 2. Uh, John's teachings were far different from that of the scribes. Uh, remember uh, Daniel's prophecy that the Messiah would die was prophesied in Daniel chapter 9 and then uh, mentioned that at the end of a 483 year period of time beginning from the time of Nehemiah's return to build the walls and streets of Jerusalem that 483 years later that the Messiah would come but he'd be cut off and so and, but not for himself in other words he'd come and he'd die but not for himself and so Andrew could have done that prophecy as well and so looking for John uh, or someone a voice crying in the wilderness looking for the Messiah uh, may very well been on the mind of many of the disciples uh, knowing that the time was near uh, they didn't know when Jesus would be born but they didn't know when he would die and so when uh, uh, Andrew saw John from that period he knew that the Messiah would die in 33 years he didn't know exactly you know what age he would be but uh, he knew that he, he was coming and so this may have led him to uh, follow John the Baptist as well as Peter to follow John the Baptist see Andrew was a very humble man and the Bible tells us love envies not uh, and we see that in the life of Andrew regarding his brother's ministry we don't see any jealousy between the two and uh, maybe I'm reading a little bit into this relationship uh, because it's where the Bible's silent but the point should be taken anyway that uh, no matter what Peter's relationship with Jesus was and what his ministry was it was up to Andrew to do the right thing uh, whether Andrew was uh, as outwardly successful as Peter was it, it shouldn't make any difference his willingness to serve God no matter what was happening to the others. So a servant of Jesus should never be envious because one may have entered the race after he did or she did. But now is ahead of the ministry. Going back with Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas and Saul. Uh, Barnabas clearly was serving God faithfully when sent from the church at Jerusalem up to Antioch, uh, Barnabas took time out a couple of weeks, maybe even more, to take a detour to get Saul and introduce him into the church at Antioch. And then they became missionaries. And then Paul gained popularity over Barnabas as far as uh, notoriety. But Barnabas didn't mind that. It didn't bother him one bit. And we should, it didn't bother us either. Uh, if somebody comes behind us and does a better job, praise God. Uh, that's not what we're about. We do the God that God's called us to do, and maybe our success is not the success that the world thinks is success, because uh, the world thinks numbers and money equal success, uh, but our success is faithfulness. We just do what God's called us to do. In John 1, 36-39, uh, uh, it says, Looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Of course, this is Andrew speaking here. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Je Jesus turned and saw them following, and said to him, What seek ye? And they sent him, Rabbi, which is said, being termed Master, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. So Andrew saw Jesus and recognized him as the Lamb of God. How? Well, going back to Matthew 16, when Peter was asked, Who do you say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Son of God, thou art the Christ. Jesus' response was, Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father. So the same thing is true here with Andrew. How did he know that Jesus was the Lamb of God. Well, what was Andrew seeking? And I believe what he was seeking is what he found. John 1, 41 says he first finds his own brother Simon 
and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. So Andrew here wasn't satisfied in knowing who Jesus was. He wanted others to know as well. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation of stone. Of course, Jesus responds here to Peter. And Peter having a very, very significant ministry, uh, outward ministry, in the early church age. Quiet leadership with Andrew. So there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. Uh, the same came, were therefore, to Philip, which was the Bethsaida in Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip comes and tells Andrew, and again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. So he said, Quiet leadership. Someone came to him, and he goes and tells Jesus. Uh, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. So the trust that uh, Philip had in Andrew. Certain Greeks come to Philip. Philip goes to Andrew. And then Andrew and Philip go to Jesus. But quiet, m meek attitude of serving God. And trusting the unknown. A lot of unknowns in this world, a lot of unknowns that we see on a daily basis, things that are going on that we don't know how they'll turn out. Uh, it can be very frustrating at times. Uh, we want the answers, and God doesn't always give us them. This is while the others seem to though be in total despair. It was Andrew that went to Jesus and told about the boy with the loaves and fishes. John 6, 8, 9 says, One of the disciples, Andrew, again Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? So Andrew didn't understand, but he didn't know who to go to. The others wondering, you know, what, what, what are we going to do? i got all these people hungry. We can't feed them. They need to go home. But Andrew goes to Jesus and says, all we have here is five loaves and two fishes. Uh, I know it's not enough to feed so many, but nevertheless, this is what we have. And of course, uh, through this we see the great miracle of the feeding of the multitude. Not so much time later, they'd see another feeding of the multitude. This time, it was the feeding of Jews. First time the feeding of the Jews, second time the feeding of Gentiles. Uh, and that was not just to show the Jews and Gentiles that Jesus could supply, but it was to show the disciples that Jesus was coming to Jews and Gentiles alike. The Bible doesn't tell us this. Okay, so uh, we do need to understand that. But history tells us that Andrew was martyred by being bound uh, but not nailed to the cross like Jesus was. Uh, not the, the T-shaped cross like Jesus was. Uh, but that Andrew had been crucified on a cross of the form called the crux, the uh, decasada, or basically an X-shaped cross. Uh, which today is known as the St. Andrew's Cross. Uh, this was performed at his own request because uh, he, like his brother Peter, felt unworthy to be crucified in the same manner that Jesus was. Remember, history tells us that Peter was crucified, but he chose to be crucified upside down, just uh, feeling, feeling unworthy to be a, uh, suffer the exact same type of crucifixion. Bartholomew, we'll look at uh, here, but um, this will be a short class because I'm going to get into Bartholomew in the next class. Uh, there's a lot more information, even though it's 
very little information found uh, in the Bible. A lot of things I want to talk about with Bartholomew as to uh, who he was and the ministry that he had.